What's up guys, Gun for Newbies back here. I uh, want to thank everybody for all the new likes and subs that we've got recently, and more importantly, just all the continuous uh, people that have uh, came back and, you know, contributed and even taught me a cute couple things by just, uh, you know, choosing to participate in the channel. I wanted to talk about something that had some, um, I guess, curiosity for me. So I chose these two guns, one because they're, um, you know, both uh, essentially steel frame. They're close to the same exact size, length, uh, both shoot nine millimeter. Um, and also the same weight. So I believe this one's actually, I think the competitor weighs right around 30 ounces, maybe 29. And then this one I think is 31 ounces when I weighed it on my scale. So really the only difference is, um, is the optic, I guess, on this one, which that's not really gonna help for recoil. Um, so just wanted to point um, just some, some similarities here in between these two. Uh, mainly the point of, com of comparing these two is this one has, as you can see, barrel and port or uh, barrel and uh, slide ports. So it's integrated into both. Uh, that means that the first point of ejection for propellant is gonna be directly um, coming out of the barrel. So it's not going to essentially eliminate and come out of the slide how it does on this guy. So before we start, I guess we will safety check it so I don't get in trouble by uh, the YouTubers. And um, so as you can see, this one is clear. You can see a little bit in there. Um, same thing with this guy. I can see both of them. I don't know how the camera's picking them up, but I can see they're both safety checked. So again, as you can see, the main differences are gonna be that, like I said, this one has a shorter barrel, hence why the guide rod looks a little longer. This always looks a little bizarre to me, just how they did it. Um, you know, and I actually contemplated getting a full size barrel that would come all the way out and then porting through the top. Um, the problem was that SIG couldn't give me a for sure answer if a different barrel would obviously work. This does look a lot like the X5 Legion barrel. So, um, but they said that the slide was specifically um, made for this barrel. So this combination. So I'm not really sure how that would work, but it is a little bit more open up here that I've looked um, when I've opened it up or taken it apart. I've look, got a closer look at it. So um, I'm just going to take the word for it. I really don't want to damage the gun trying to do something that may not even prove any benefit. So, um, and that's actually what you're going to find today. So in the actual range footage, uh, we will go to that here in a minute. Um, I compared both of these and did some, some targets and I actually shot better with this guy. And that's very surprising considering that the... Um, trigger on this guy is so much better and historically i've shot more accurate with mps just because i really do love the trigger um so we can go through that uh, real quick so another big difference here not that this is going to change recoil or anything like that but it will help accuracy is the fact that on this guy all right we're clear it always resets you back to exactly where you start which is the biggest gripe i've had with sig so to show you so if we reset right there it is, okay, but if I take my finger off the trigger, it's literally right there. So it just takes you back to restart, which I personally, I wouldn't say I dislike it anymore, but I wish it was better, um, especially with the amount of money that people are paying for, uh, you know, even I are paying for guns like this. I think that it should have a better trigger, especially when you can get something like the M&P, which I'll show you here for in, in just a second if you haven't already seen it. But as you can see, right, so we'll do the reset right? Because this is going to be every single shot. And then it takes you all the way back here and you pull and then it breaks. So for some reason, it feels shorter when you pull than the reset. Not sure why. It's always been such a weird thing for me. And yeah, I've gotten used to it and I shoot really good with these now. So I'm not going to say it's the worst idea or whatever, but all in all, if anything, really, all that does is teach you that you should be practicing with your guns, no matter what it is, whatever setup you like. It doesn't mean that it's bad. It's just because somebody says, oh, I like this, but this has a better trigger. That doesn't mean that it's going to be better for you. It can be better in a, a logistics test or statistically or whatever you want to call it. But at the same time, if you shoot better with whatever um, you're used to, then stick with that, right? So um, on this guy, I'll show you. So again, we're clear. And the reset, I feel it right here. So of course, I'm gonna let off too much, yep. So um, it's got a really, really nice, um, you know, where you start to feel, it's not the actual wall. There's a little bit of creep. 
and then a wall, and it's very definitive. So for me, I'm able to essentially uh, get faster follow-up shots with this and, and feel like I know exactly where my shots are going to go, or so I thought. But I, I mean, historically, I really ha don't like walls on any guns other than 1911s, and uh, the M&Ps just have been the best for me. One thing that I've really struggled with, especially as a new shooter, is um, I hated striker-fired striker fired triggers. I really did like like 1911-style triggers, and I just hated the, um, you know, the the mechanisms that they would put into like these. Um, I've had several Springfield XDMs and those have great triggers in them. Could never really do too much with them. I've had, you know, uh, MMP, uh, the 2.0, the polymer editions, like when they first came out, didn't have much luck with those either. I've worked and worked on Glocks, even though I love Glocks for the look, the reliability, everything they have. Um, but again, I was just not the most accurate. I was nowhere near as accurate as I could be with the MMPs uh, that all had this newer uh, trigger in them. And so I've just kind of stuck with that. And even with my MMP shield that I can still carry for uh, my EDC, um, or I guess is in my rotation, that that you know shoots amazing for how small it is, the sight radius, um, the level of recoil it has, and um, just all that it has to offer. It being such a thin little gun, and I can shoot it really, really well. So um, I was very shocked because, to be fair, the striker uh, fired gun that I have the most amount of range time with now is on this flat platform because I have this, I have the Spectre Comp, I had the X5 Legion, I had the M18, um, and then I had also my X Macro. So collectively, I've put the most through this non-safety, long trigger reset, um, you know, trigger mechanism, or I guess FCU that's tied into that trigger mechanism. And so that could be a lot why I shot uh, clear, but in terms of everything else, uh, these are both phenomenal guns. I'm not trying to put either one of them down. I don't plan to sell either one of them. I really love them. However, um, I did feel that I enjoyed um, shooting this one a little bit more. Um, and it was really, really hard. I mean, if I'm being blatantly honest, I enjoy shooting both of them. So I'm not going to say I, I, I dislike this one more. Um, I just, if I had to choose a winner, I guess I would choose this one just because I like it. Now I do love all the entirely all steel frame. I do love the way that they did the grip panels on these. I mean, it's fully sealed on the inside. So I really like that uh, in terms of like how they finish this as a full steel frame. Um, if I had to knock anything on this is that they've actually put these panels in. Not that that's, you know, gonna really do anything unless a panel falls out. I mean, hypothetically it could have an issue, but it's just little things that I'm trying to nitpick here, but mainly on, you know, to get back to the moral of the, the, the video is that on the actual, you know, idea behind this, because obviously this gun and this gun doesn't come ported um, naturally, but I sent it out to get ported and then that's why you have six ports here. So one thing that this had above this guy is that it has more total space out of the barrel uh, with the six ports on you know because it's got three on the right side three on the left side um, as opposed to just two larger ports here um, you know and this one still shot better so and er ergonomically uh, speaking you know you're going to get all the people that are saying oh sig has a higher borax which it does i'm not saying it doesn't um and the sig people that defend that don't make any sense because it definitely does um it just didn't bother me i thought i had fat i i felt more confident with this one the trigger was a little bit slower but um, side acquisition was definitely quicker for me on this one. I was definitely more accurate. Um, and I will tell you, recoil wise, um, I definitely feel that there is no real benefit. I mean, as long as um, you have a sort of compensation, it's going to be it, it's going to be relatively the same. I will say I felt literally no real difference. They both recoiled incredibly similar. They both were fantastic shooting guns. Um, you know, and that's the lovely thing about this one. And I guess that would be a leg up for this guy is that, well, let's, you know, if we were just to buy the gun, they'd be close to the same price, right? Without the optic. So if you bought the gun without the optic, they'd be close to the same price. This one still be a little bit more. Um, but not if you took into the fact that if you bought this one and you sent it out to get ported, you'd be right around the same, same price. Now, the difference would be this one has a warranty and this one does not. So I guess um, that is something to take into consideration. If you want something that starts having issues, you can just send it back in. This is your guy. Um, but all in all, 
Um, they both did fantastic. I'll skip ahead to the range footage. Barrel and slide ports versus slide port not whatsoever, but it actually still be a little bit longer on this guy. But we'll see, this one's got a little bit more weight to it. Uh, so we'll see how they do. Shots on the left with this one and 10 shots on the right with this one. And I'll tell you what I feel as far as recoil wise. Uh, the M&P competitor has a by far better trigger, so the shooting should be a little bit better. Zero the optics. Do one more magazine and then we'll see what we're thinking, but we'll see also the target. The trigger on the MP is by far better. You can see um, I actually did better over here. I had two too low. These are much tighter group there. Uh, this one's cutting outside. Uh, so actually it's very surprising because I really wasn't even Aiming all that well, I haven't even zeroed the optics, so technically they could be uh, more tight if I did, but that's actually really good. Try that uh, sig first. For speed wise, anyway. say um, I think this one has more muzzle flip but the repo is a lot softer in this one I'm also able to control it better this one has by far a better trigger uh, so I thought I also do better uh, if you're a person who likes a wall I don't like I like tearing tactical triggers and all my blocks because I hate feeling the wall so I just want it to break I just pull a point where I want it and I just pull it straight back exceedingly good I mean nothing I just have basically touching the line on the seven but pretty much everything's on the eight and this one i got into the six even so i mean take it for what it is but i mean in terms of and again i do have an optic on this one so that could be the different uh you know kind of the difference there but uh, i'm just going to say i really do like the sig uh the recoil is very very little we're shooting 115 grain today so it is really really small and with that being shown um, guys, we're going to go ahead and end it, uh, end the video off here. Uh, there's not really much else to talk about. This was primarily a, a recoil, um, you know, comparison, but I wanted to talk about some different comparisons in the guns because, uh, one thing that I seem to get a lot in the comments is things that I don't talk about. I'm getting the most questions on. So I'm just trying to pack with information as much as I physically can into these videos. So that way, hopefully if you're watching and you watch the whole thing, you can kind of get your answers, uh, throughout the whole video, which is awesome. And, um, you know, hopefully help you guys out when you're considering making a purchase on what it is that you want to do. Um, so hopefully this video has helped you out. Um, please be, re uh, remember to like, and subscribe. Uh, we've officially broken 715 subscribers. So it's been awesome to, uh, make some videos and see obviously the growth along the, um, the channel and its, uh, journey. So again, I just want to thank everybody. If uh, you have a friend or somebody who's looking into these guns, definitely share the video so I can get some additional views. That would be appreciated. Um, and again, we are, uh, I have a Patreon set up. So as we get further along, we start doing more stuff. Hopefully we can get some uh, supporters there so we can start getting more guns to the channel and, and things like that. So um, again, thanks for watching and be sure to stay tuned for future content.